So today, I'm showing you how to find the area of irregular polygons. Okay, so there are some basic formulas for areas of basic shapes. But when you have an odd shape like this one right here, there's no formula for this. Okay, so I'm going to show you two different methods to find the area of it. Okay, and it just depends on which one you prefer, which one you can visualize better. Okay, the first method I'm going to show you to find the area of this thing is to cut it up into right triangles. Okay, because we know how to find the area of a right triangle base times height divided by two. All right, so here's my strategy from every corner, here's my four corners. What I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the grid line into the shape. Okay, and notice from this corner, there's only one grid line going into the shape. One's going up, one's going to the side, the other's going to the other side, one's going down, and that's the only one that goes into the shape. Okay, and I'm going to do that for all the corners. See this corner? One goes up, one grid line goes down, one goes to the left, but the one on the right goes into the shape. Okay, and I'll do that for this one too. Up, down, sideways, but only the one going to the left goes into the shape. Okay. And finally, for this one too, okay? Again, only one grid line from this corner goes into the shape. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep all these lines going until what happens is they end up intersecting with each other, or at least go until each line hits the other one. And notice what we have. We end up forming four right triangles. There's one. There's the other one. Here's one right here. And then here's one on the bottom right here. Okay, and there's a square in the middle. And we can find the areas of these things because we know how to find the areas of triangles and we also know how to find the area of a square. Let's start with the square first. A square is side times side. This side is two, this side is two, and two times two is four. Now this triangle up here, Area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. So this base is one, two, three, four, five, times one, two, five times two is 10, divided by two is five. So the area of that triangle is five. And we'll just repeat that for all the triangles. This triangle here, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five times four is 20, divided by two is 10. This triangle right here, I'll use this side as my base. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 times 2 is 14, divided by 2 is 7. Okay? And then the last one here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 times 3 is 12, divided by 2 is 6. So the area of this polygon is all these little pieces added up. Okay? So if you add up 10 plus 5 plus 4 plus 6 plus 7, you'll get the answer, okay? 10 plus 5 is 15, plus 4 is 19, plus 6 is 25, plus 7 is 32 square units, okay? So that's one method of finding the area of an irregular polygon. Now I'm going to show you a different method. And same polygon, but this time, instead of focusing on the inside, I'm going to show you how to find the area of this shape by focusing on the outside, okay? So when you focus on the outside, what you want to first do is put a box around this, a rectangle around this, as tight a rectangle as it can be, okay? So I'll show you what I mean. Here's the corner of the shape to the far left, right? So I'm going to kind of draw a line here. This is going to be one side of my rectangle. This is the highest point of my polygon, so I'll draw a side of the rectangle here that hits that. This point is the furthest to the right, so I'll draw a line here. And then this is the lowest point of my polygon, so I'll draw a line there. So basically what I just did is put a rectangle around this thing, tightly around this thing, and my strategy is going to be find the area of this big rectangle and then subtract off these little four triangles on the outside, because those are pieces of the uh, area I don't want to include. So if I take the area of the whole rectangle, minus these four little pieces, what's left is the piece I do want, which is the shaded region, 
Okay, so let's find the areas of this big rectangle here. Uh, length times width, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the height would be one, two, three, four, five, six, or width. So the area of the big rectangle is 10 times 6, which is 60. Okay, now let's subtract off the pieces I don't want. For example, I don't want this piece right here. And notice this piece here, that's a, uh, that's a triangle. It's easy to find the area of a triangle. We just did it a second ago. Base times height divided by 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times 2 divided by 2 is 7. Right here, this triangle here. 3 times 4 divided by 2 is 6. This triangle right here is 4 times 5 divided by 2 is 10. And then this triangle right here would be 5 times 2 divided by 2 is 5. Okay? So if I add up these pieces here, I get 10 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. Those are the pieces I don't want. Okay, so we found the area of the big rectangle. We found the areas of the pieces we don't want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract the area of the pieces we don't want and what's left will be the piece I do want. Okay, so let's do that. 10 plus five is 15, plus six is 21, plus seven is 28. So this is all 28. So this is really 60 minus 28. And if I subtract that, 60 minus 28 is 32 square units. Boom. And notice, I get the same answer for the area no matter which method I choose. Now, personally, I like this method because if you notice, we're finding the same areas that we found in here, but there's a little bit less work because I don't have to find the area of the big rectangle and I don't have to subtract anything. I do have to find the area of a small square, but that's pretty easy and I just add them. Over here, I have to find those same triangles add them, and then I also have to subtract it. So I feel like this is a little bit more work. However, it's a little easier to visualize, okay? So whichever method works best for you will work because both will get you the same area, okay? I'll show you one more uh, area of a polygon. And what's funny about this one is this last example is not an irregular polygon. It's actually a square. And we know how to find the area of a square. It's side times side, but notice I don't know the lengths of these sides, so I can't just do side times side. And I can't count them because since it's going diagonally, I don't know what the length is. So sometimes when you have basic shapes, you still have to use these methods to find the area. And this is a good example of that. So for this square here, I'm going to use my favorite method, which is cutting it up. So from each corner. I'm just going to follow the grid lines inside. And when you get really good at this, you start recognizing how far you actually have to draw the lines because you know where they're going to intersect. All right? So there you go. I just cut it up just like that. Okay. So now I'll just find the area of the pieces and add them up. Okay? So let's start with the square in the middle. That one's pretty easy. It's the same as last time. Two by two. Four. Now this right triangle right here is two by four. So 2 times 4 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. Hey, it's the same as the square in the middle. All right, this triangle up here is 4 times 2 divided by 2, which is also 4. I sense a pattern here. Uh, this right triangle right here is 2 times 4 divided by 2, 4. And then would you believe the bottom triangle is 4 times 2 divided by 2, which is also 4. So the area of this tilted square, I guess you could call it, is 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. Did I get them all? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yep. So I'm adding up 5 4s. I'm just going to multiply in my head. 4 times 5 is 20. So this is 20 square units. All right? So the point of this, or the, the big thing to keep in mind here, is that when you're finding the areas of shapes that don't quite follow easy basic shape formulas, you have two ways to do it. I find the easiest method is to cut it up, but make sure when you cut it up, you follow those grid lines. Um, don't draw any diagonal lines. Make sure they go straight in, because when you do that, they will automatically form easy triangles, and then you can just add up the pieces. Or, if you like this method better, start by surrounding it, and then subtracting off the pieces you don't want. 
okay? So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math and I will see you next time.